In this video, we are going to discuss on how to proceed if a Remotion Lambda render is failing and how to ensure that your production deployment is both scalable and stable. This is the last video in a three-part series on Remotion Lambda, where in the first video, we installed Remotion Lambda and in the second video, we looked at how it can be integrated into a Node.js application. One type of error that can occur is a delay render timeout. Something like this would happen. Delay render gets called, telling Remotion that the render should not yet be started, but this delay render handle never gets cleared. Now, this could be either coded explicitly or one of the components like the video component, the image component, they all use delay render underneath. It could be one of those causing the error. Since we are executing JavaScript code, it is not impossible that an exception gets thrown and that can also be a cause for an error. A second type of timeout can occur and that is the Lambda timeout. When you deploy a Lambda function, it by default has a timeout of two minutes. And if your video cannot be rendered within that timeout, the function will time out. However, the timeout can be increased up to 15 minutes. However, the Lambda timeout can only be set when you deploy a function. So I'm not gonna sugarcoat this. The API for this is a bit confusing, but if you set a timeout flag while deploying a Lambda function, you are setting the timeout for the function in seconds. Meanwhile, if you are rendering something, then you are setting the delay render timeout in milliseconds. By default, a Lambda function has two gigabytes of memory and two gigabytes of disk storage. If you run out of either of those, then your render may also fail. There is also a maximum of concurrent executions that you can do in a Lambda account. And obviously we want to stay under that. So these are a few ways of how a Lambda render can fail. Of course, we want to avoid it as much as possible. But if you reach a problem, I'm going to show you how to debug it. This render has failed because I intentionally put in an error and this is the best case. We are rendered via the CLI and we are able to map it back to the original location so we know exactly where the error happened. But also there is this useful cloud watch logs link here that you can open in the browser. So we open this in the browser and uh, my recommendation to you is that you first close the left sidebar, try to get as much space as possible because these logs can be pretty long horizontally. And as you can see, there's a query at the top here. It's called method equals renderer and we pass in the render ID. So we get all the logs for this render ID. And if we expand this even further, you can see the chunk number, for example, chunk equals four, and that explains how Remotion Lambda works under the hood. It invokes a Lambda function many times and splits up the render into many chunks, and each chunk renders a portion of a video. Now we can scroll, scroll to the right and click this blue link to see the full logs of chunk number four. And in many error messages, you will see the chunk number as well. So use this to identify the right log stream. Each log stream has interesting information. At the top of it, you can see the render ID and the chunk number. And you can see which frames were attempted to render. Then you can see whether parallel encoding was used. You shouldn't have to worry too much about it, but if we ask you for this information, then we are also happy if you provide it. 
as well as the amount of memory that, that is free. Then for each frame that was rendered, you can see the timestamp and this is useful to debug slow parts of a video and to optimize the performance. And also at the bottom, you can see the frames that were slowest to render. Then at the very bottom, we get a log from AWS, which tells you how long the function took um, to see if you're close to a timeout, but also how much memory was used. So here you can see this Lambda function has two gigabytes of memory, but only 500 megabyte was used. This means for this type of render, I should consider decreasing the memory because the lower you set the memory, the cheaper the Lambda render is. And it is actually direct, directly proportional. If you have the memory, then the Lambda render cost is also only half. In some rare cases, it is also possible that the main function has an error. The main function is the function which spawns all the other functions and uh, orchestrates them and gets the small chunks from them and concatenates the chunks into the final video. The most common error that can happen is that during this concatenation phase, the main function is timing out this means that your video almost made it to the end and all the chunks were rendered, but it was not possible to concatenate the chunks in time. So if you need to look at the logs of the main function, you can change this query from method equals renderer to method equals launch. And then you can take a look at the logs of that. Oftentimes is also pretty insightful. And uh, here you can also, for example, see the timings of select composition. So you can see how long it took to uh, initially evaluate your Remotion project. And that might give you a hint on how to optimize that. In most cases, you will find the curl print of your render failure. But if not, then I'm reminding you that you're always welcome to jump into our Remotion Discord where we can help you out in such scenarios. We have a document called Production Checklist that you should look at before you go live with your Remotion Lambda project. But I'm also quickly going through the most important points here. Try different memory sizes and go down as much as possible as long as the render is still reliably working. You can really save a lot that way. If you want to track the cost, you can use the remotion estimate price function where you can put in the parameters of your render and you can get a non-binding estimation. Try to minimize effects that are using the GPU. Of course, in some cases it is unavoidable but you should know that a Lambda function does not have any graphics unit, which means that certain elements will be very slow. That includes everything that is WebGL based, like for example, TreeJS, but also CSS properties such as box shadow, text shadow, gradients, and filter, especially the blur filter. So oftentimes we see people getting a quick win by removing a small blur and then their render time halves. 